Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Pinovich. It's midnight and we're keeping an eye on the storms out there. I'll show you a quick loop of the radar here. And we've had some isolated thunderstorms move across the Piedmont um, with some loud cloud to ground lightning. That's been the main story, real heavy rain. But back to the west, this is the real deal. This is the story. Uh, this line moving to the upstate of South Carolina and Northeast Georgia, it has had some really strong winds. You can see some of the severe thunderstorm warnings down in the Atlanta area. And that's really where we're gonna be watching for the next couple of hours. I'm gonna show you a little wider view here in a minute um, as we kind of show you just the radar view you see that line and again it's moving east fairly quickly now that's good and bad news the good news is that means it's going to get in and out quicker the bad news is fast moving lines of storms tend to produce strong winds because if it's moving 45 or 50 miles per hour you know it's at least got the capabilities of producing that type of wind speed so that's why you always got to be careful of this and what we call QLCS tornado it's basically quick little spin-ups within that line. So here's a quick look at the timeline. Again, Greenville, about 1245, looks like the worst of it will be in there. Um, Gastonia, 140. Charlotte, about 2, 230. Greensboro, 240. Asheboro, Burlington, around 3. And then Chapel Hill, Durham, 4 o'clock. Raleigh, maybe 435, depending on how things unfold. Uh, the stronger part of the line is certainly the southern part of this line. Um, let me show you a future cast here. So we'll go through time. Um, here we are about 2 o'clock in the morning. I'll stop it right there. The line's starting to enter the Piedmont, and right around 2.30, 3 o'clock, starts to cross over. And if you look carefully, the biggest concern is going to be right around, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to do that, uh, is going to be right around the Charlotte area south. So down in here is where we have some of the parameters in place for severe storms and the, a quick spin-up. So damaging winds, again, probably... The higher, I would say 9 out of 10 chance you're going to get damaging winds and maybe a 1% chance of a tornado at this point. But it's still there and it's the overnight hours, which is like the worst case scenario for, for warning purposes. But again, just a quick look at the future cast kind of shows you exactly what we're expecting there. And just looking at that STP or, or what we call significant tornado parameter, where is it the highest? Let's go to about 2.33 in the morning. Again, not off the charts. I mean, you look at the scale, you're below 1, but... Anytime I see anything around a half of one to one is kind of where you say, hey, no one, two percent chance of a tornado in that area. That seems reasonable in the environment. So not a huge risk overall, but something to keep a close eye. So again, uh, just kind of, you know, I call babysitting the radar here, watching these storms. You gotta always be careful some renegade storm doesn't pop up ahead of the main line like in here. So we'll keep an eye on that. But overall, I'm not concerned with that. It's really this main line back to the west, which you could see um, entering the western part of the area. Quick look at the, the velocity data here. Let me, let me stop this and we'll look at the velocity data. Again, within the line, you can see there are some little squiggles in there that, you know, you got to keep an eye on. Most of this line looks very tame right now. But again, moving to the east around 35, 40 miles per hour. Look for a time of arrival in the Charlotte metro area, kind of metroplex uh, around 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning. Of course, I'll stay up, up and kind of keep an eye on this. If anything changes, Larry should be here by about two o'clock as well, but I may post a other, another update before heading to bed, depending on how tired I am.